All right, so I've been on a mission to build a small fixed wing aircraft for as cheap as possible. I'm using a 3D printer and an Arduino for this in order to save on things like expensive foam and a fancy flight controller. Last video, I tried fully designing and printing a flying wing that used an Arduino Uno as a flight controller. The problem is I have no previous RC nor C++ experience, and so I never even got to the flight testing stage with this one. This time, I have developed my manufacturing methods and Arduino skills a little further and took some time considering the flight dynamics. And so I'm going to go over the progress I've made when developing this aircraft, which has essentially turned into a completely custom EDF jet. This video is going to be more of an update style as opposed to a final presentation, as you'll see the end results aren't that pretty. If you're looking for something that flies tomorrow, this might be a waste of your time. The goal of this video is to document my progress, and hopefully share some of the methods I've been using to be a resource for people working on maybe similar types of projects. I use the CAD split method again. I go into detail on this in the last video, but basically I designed a large master model in CAD, then used reference planes to split up sections of the plane, strategically placing the planes to get principal sections with straight edges, Again, this is the same method I use for the flying wing, just on a larger scale. With this method, I can easily print complex geometries like the wing section or the fuselage cutouts. I think I split the plane up into 12 smaller parts, but I could have gotten away with making an even fewer amount of parts if I wanted to. I'm using this black PLA Plus for all of the parts. In my experience, it's a much stronger PLA uh, compared to the regular one at a marginally more expensive cost. If I print most of the parts from 0% infill, then it is light enough. I'm using an Ender 3 and our CR10, and so between the two, it took about 40 hours of printing. To put everything together, I first sanded and then super glued the components. Then I went in with this 3D pen to essentially plastic weld the parts together. The difference from the last video is I'm using the exact PLA Plus to weld instead of some random regular PLA that I found lying around. This dramatically increased the quality of the welds. I don't know if it's just the temps that I was using on the pen, or some sort of chemical property that makes the PLA plus bond really well with each other as opposed to the regular PLA. But in any case, the welds combined with the super glue are very strong. The walls of the parts act as spars, which simplifies the build process dramatically compared to if you're making this out of foam and wood. For the wheels, I added these Lego wheels, which attach to a larger plate. This allows me to move the wheels up and down based on CG adjustments. I also super glued and plastic welded the Legos onto the frame. So in total, the frame weighed in at 412 grams. While there are definitely ways to cut down on the frame and in the design, I'm pretty happy with this number, I think. This is a short clip I made a few days back that goes over the electronics and control surfaces. Um, up in the front, we have the battery with the wire kind of holding it in place. You have the two servos that go on the wing uh, with the ailerons here. You have two servos in the back where they're attached right to the uh, vertical fin. Uh, both vertical fins, um, you move in the same direction in tandem. Uh, you have the EDF secured in the back. You have the wires going through. Um, the ESC is under here. The wiring is pretty messy, but you have the UNO in the middle, um, the receiver, and then the MPU um, gyroscope over there. Uh, this is kind of the cover. It's really badly printed, uh, but it goes on right there. I think I'm just going to tape it for this run. So some couple things to note, I don't have elevators here for simplicity's sake. I figured a thrust would compensate for pitch control. This might be a huge mistake as you'll see later. And then the actual method of attaching the control surfaces were super janky. I basically dremeled slots in the wings and the fins, I used thin wire as the axle, and then filled the slot with the pen filament to secure it in place. It worked, but the motion is pretty rough and obviously not very pretty. I'm interested to see how people in the actual RC hobby approach this. I managed to code in both manual control and some type of roll control. Mapping the channel values to the servo via the Arduino is pretty simple. I'm using FlySky transmitter receiver, which to my knowledge all use iBus. And so using the iBus library makes all of these things easy. The only part I really got stuck on was making the ailerons go in opposite directions when I'm rolling in a direction. Uh, this was just because I forgot the servos were flipped when I attached it to the wings. So I also have roll control. I'm putting that in quotations because while getting the raw data from the gyro is pretty easy using the MPU 6050 library, and while mapping the servo angles uh, are also pretty easy, it's hard to know without any kind of aerodynamic analysis how much we should be deflecting. But again, it didn't take a lot just to map the servo angles and then orient the MPU uh, to the Euler angles of the plane. I used a magic filter to cut down on some gyroscopic error. So in theory, there is stability along the roll axis, even if I have no idea or practical way to find out how much the aileron should be moving uh, when the plane rolls. 
And then what's not easy is yaw control. This is a well-documented problem for the MPU 6050, which itself is pretty outdated. From what I understand, the Z-axis is unable to correct itself using the accelerometer data, whereas the X and Y can. This means that without any sort of correction, the yaw values are going to drift. Or when a filter like this is applied, the yaw values are going to keep correcting back to the same value. I spent a lot of time trying to observe the error of the drift and then calculating and cutting down um, with every loop. But I couldn't really find a way to do this very precisely and nothing really worked. And so for this iteration, I kind of abandoned yaw control completely. It makes sense to go with the modern gyro for this instead of trying to work out kind of the kinks of the MPU 6050. So before I tried to fly it, I did this very simple test that someone on my last video recommended. After I built the frame, I loaded the drone with some plastic bags as rocks that stood in for the components, such as the battery, the EDF, and the Arduino. I taped down the bags to where I thought these components would go on the plane, and then I chucked the plane into a couch to see if it glides. I was pretty concerned about the parts breaking, which in theory shouldn't be a problem if I believe in the integrity of the welds and the superglue. Uh, but in the two runs that I did do, the plane actually looked like it glided pretty well. And that was basically the extent of my aerodynamic testing for this iteration. Now for the actual flight testing, um, surprise, surprise, this doesn't actually fly at all. One of the issues is that the Lego wheels had no chance against the rough pavement that I was using as a runway. They would fall off when the speed picked up or the plane would veer off pretty quickly due to the size and lack of grip of these very small plastic wheels. And then when I tried to launch from my hand, this is what happened. So now I'm trying to figure out why the plane reacted like that. There are some pretty simple flight dynamics explanations. For example, I found the center of gravity to be about three quarters down the cord, which is not great. The wings might have been too small and not enough lift was generated. I could have been way too hard on the throttle when I was launching it out of the hand, uh, causing the wings to stall pretty quickly. Unfortunately, I don't think the clip showed much info, at least with someone with limited knowledge like me. The good news is the PLA Plus held up super well, I suppose. It was the welds that failed when the plane crashed. Actually, I don't know if this is a good thing, but it's at least a valuable thing to know going forward. So if you care, here are some plans for my next iteration. First, I'm going to get some more realistic proportions. There are some resources such as this trainer design website um, that I've been looking into. Um, this allows me to calculate wing area um, and find out a better working airfoil if I need it. And then overall, trying to make a more realistically proportioned plane, um, especially with all the stuff going on in the back. The EDF kind of makes this hard to design. Number two is fixing the wheel system. This is pretty obvious. I would like some larger, preferably rubber wheels, at least something that doesn't fall off when it hits a pebble. Number three, incorporating an elevator, which might help for takeoff. Number four, improving the way I'm implementing these control surfaces. As I already mentioned, the way I'm doing it right now is very janky. And then number five, reconsider materials, including looking into lightweight PLA and then PLA carbon fiber. Anyways, I appreciate anyone who's following along with this. If you want a GitHub with some of the STLs and control and test code, um, I'd be more than happy to post that. Again, hopefully this can be a help to anyone working on manned drones or Arduino or maybe both at the same time. But in any case, thank you guys for watching.